Now in my contracts, I always say that if you buy one of my dogs, you own it, co-own it with me. I only sell them on co-ownership. Um, you co-own it with me, and that's simply for the fact that if you ever have to get rid of it, it has to come home. And I refund your purchase price for the life of the dog. So if you pay $1,500 for the dog, you get $1,500 back. And I actually had someone take me up on that um, when the dog was seven because her life had changed. She was a divorcee. She wanted to go travel. She had a new boyfriend. He really didn't care for the dog. And she called me and she said, you know, I'm le reading this clause in your contract. You know, I know he's seven, but I'd really like to return him. And I said, absolutely, where can I meet you? And I got him back, and he actually went to live with an attorney friend of mine in Massachusetts. So it worked out great for him. He was a one-on-one -on -one dog. The woman took him to work all the time. It was perfect. And the other woman did not feel guilty about dropping him off. I let her know that he went to a great home, and I gave her her money back, and she was thrilled. So what I do is I help people resolve conflicts. That was a way I resolved conflicts without litigation. I actually had litigation once where I had to sue someone who gave my dog away. And on the bottom of my contract, it says, I have the first right of refusal. Well, she gave it away, and she said, you'll never find it. And I said, oh, you don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> I will find it. And actually, she had told another owner of mine where she had placed it. It was in a great home. But she had told the person who had the bitch that, in fact, I just wanted it back to breed it. And that was why he wouldn't talk to me at all. So we had to go to litigation, and it was in New Jersey, and I'm only admitted in New York, so I even had to hire an attorney who was a colleague of mine. We had to go through the whole rigmarole. I got the dog back, and that was on a Tuesday. And on Friday, I said to him, are you off tomorrow? And he said, yes. And I said, why don't you come to my house, and we'll have a cup of coffee, and we'll talk about how you can get her back. I said, this is what I tried to do with you before we went to litigation. But because of what was said to you, you didn't understand the reason that I wanted her back. I only wanted her back so that I could enter into a contract with you, giving you the same rights and responsibilities I'd given to the first owner. Because it's so important to me that I bring these dogs onto the earth, and as far as I'm concerned, I am responsible for them until they close their eyes, hopefully of natural causes, or because it's the most humane thing to do. That's the only reason. And I often ask my owners if they have an opportunity to call me so I can say goodbye. I actually said goodbye to one of mine. She was with a 90-year-old a woman, and the woman just couldn't put her down, and she really needed, you know, I, I never want to put a dog down, but you know when you know that their quality of life really is not what you want it to be. So I actually brought her home, and I bathed her, and I got her all clean and on fluffy blankets. And then um, Eleanor came over and sat down, and we said goodbye to her together. It was a May day. It was under my beautiful dogwood tree. And so we said goodbye to her in a way that was so beautiful that Eleanor said to me, oh, my God, I would never have thought this would have been a beautiful process for me. But it was because that's what I do. And most breeders, truthfully, if you're able to have a conversation, will do that. It's simply that people get stuck in their positions. And so I decided that I would not ever litigate again.